Hello YouTube. Well, today I'm in a small part of Iowa uh, that is now a obviously a vacation. Let me turn you around a little bit. It's obviously a vacation type community with lots of um, lots of cottages and uh, I'm sure some of a lot of people live in here year round, but a lot of small cottages. And it was, or is the site of the, what's known as the Spirit Lake Massacre. Happened uh, between March 8th and 10th of 1857. What you see behind me is the gardener cabin. It is the original cabin in its original spot. Um, and this was one of the, the beginning of, uh, of the attacks and the massacre happened here. Uh, the, almost the entire gardener family was uh, killed and the only one who wasn't was Abby. So this is known as the Abby Gardner uh, cabin. Let me try to set the scene of what was going on back then. Is uh, there were a couple of treaties then in um, 1852, so five years earlier, were the uh, Trevis de Sioux and uh, Mendota treaties. And in those they set up a reservation for the Sioux. Uh, this is right on the Minnesota border. I'm like 20 miles into Iowa and sort of close to, you know, only 50 miles or so from where South Dakota, Minnesota, and Iowa all meet up. So they this this the sewer here you think of them the plains indians out in the dakotas but this is uh they were all the way over here and in, into uh minnesota the the actual roots of a lot of this go back even farther is uh 1840 uh one uh they call them in reports I'm reading, renegade chief uh, known as Scarlet Point. I'm gonna probably mess up his name. Uh, is Inkpad Inkpaduta um, known as Scarlet Point to the Anglo's? Anyway, uh, he led, or he he was. Um, Kicked out of the tribe, kicked, you know, whatever, separated from the from the the tribe that he'd belonged to. Um, be, in 1840, there was a, a murder of a chief and disputes, and anyway, so he had his own band, um, and his brother was killed in um, early on in. 1857 or 1856 by a, uh, a guy named Henry Loft or Lot. Uh, him and his, his sons were trappers and traders and uh, didn't just kill him, but beheaded him. And then uh, fled the area. They, they complained to the, you know, he complained about his brother's murder to the authorities a uh, lot and his sons had had fled the area eventually uh, they were found but the prosecutor decided not to press charges which just inflamed the situation and not only that but the but the prosecutor took his brother's head and put it on a pike in front of his office you want to piss somebody off kill their brother and then decorate your office with their with a head um so 
that's going on. Um, the, the reservations that were set aside uh, by those treaties, the government was really slow and in supplies coming in. Um, it got to be a very hard winter. Uh, the winter of 1856 to 57, very hard for everybody. Um, so the natives uh, in this band, they were starving. Um, they, the whites would refuse to feed them or give any more food because they were having, they didn't have a whole lot to go on either. Uh, some of the natives um, would go into the cropland after the harvest. We're talking in the winter and try to glean um, from the harvested fields, the dropped grains and corn and, and whatnot. Um, animals that died, they would butcher them. They didn't necessarily be out, you know, the white men are saying they're killing your cattle, they're finding dead cattle. You know, you be the judge of what's going on. Um, one of, just before the massacre and stuff, one of uh, the natives was out hunting and a settler's dog bit him. He killed the dog. The white man who the dog belonged to was upset and uh, beat him and his family, beat that native uh, unconscious and mauled him up pretty bad. So he, um, when he was on, when he came to and was recovering, he said that he had had a vision that they needed to uh, clear the, the settlers and the white people out of the area. Um, so, all of that led up to what has been called the Spirit Lake Massacre. Um, came here and um, like I said, pretty much wiped out this family took Abby and uh, who was 13 at the time, took her as a captive and uh, eventually took uh, another young girl and uh, two married women that they'd, they'd killed their families and took the, the married women in uh, as captives. Okay, I just checked, <laughs> and uh, three, the other three captives were, were married. Uh, Abby was the only young girl, 13, like I said at the time, uh, 13, 14. Um, this was in March. So uh, they, in all, over the course of a few days, uh, they killed 37 settlers, you know, some accounts say 35 to 40, the monument that I'll show you uh, at the end here um, says 37 and actually lists all, all of the names. Um, eventually, well, two of the women uh, froze on the, on the march as they, they were taking them away from here. Um, by Abby's account, one was pushed into a river and not allowed uh, to come up on either bank. She'd try to get out of the river, they would club her and push her back in, and eventually she she froze to death in this river and drowned. Um, uh, another one uh, also froze to death. Uh, they were made to carry heavy packs, very little food. Um, what they got was the leftovers, and like I said, the 
natives were starving. They didn't have a whole lot of, of food, just what they had been able to take from the, the cabins of the people that they'd killed and whatever they could find along the way as far as game. Not a lot. Uh, some of the horses that they'd, they'd grabbed died. They were eating the horses. That When that happened, they actually were eating a little bit better, but then they'd just make the, the women carry heavier packs. Um, eventually, the uh, other, the remaining married woman who had survived up to this point was uh, bought by some members of a different tribe and uh, they took her to a reservation and turned her over to the Indian agent and they were paid $500 each for rescuing her. Um, Abby stayed in uh, as a captive and um, eventually well let me I was let's see on May 30th uh, three Wapitans appeared in the in the encampment and began a three-day uh, bargaining session for Abby and eventually uh, they traded uh, two horses 12 blankets uh, two powder kegs 20 pounds of tobacco 32 yards of blue cloth and 37 yards of calico for the captive um, they uh, took her back and uh, the 10 days so early april uh, they brought her to the Yellow Medicine Agency and uh, the mission of Dr. Thomas Williamson, who um, Abby was presented to him and uh, Abby was, was given a war cap, which was, uh, you know, a headdress, feathers, um, and uh, she... So she was you know, rescued. So this is 1857. Um, she left the area. Uh, when she came back, uh, this cabin was actually, um, was by then was occupied by another family. Uh, when she finally got back here like a year and a half later. And uh, let's see, the Prescott family. And... Uh, he reimbursed her for a, a, a small percentage of what the property was actually worth. And um, they, her and her husband that she, she'd married in the meantime, um, they had a baby, Albert, um, in 1862, and a second son, Alan, and, or in 62, and a daughter, Minnie, uh, but died at the age of 19 months. Anyway, they they moved around. They were in Iowa and Missouri and Kansas. House fires just twice destroyed their, their houses. Um, must have felt like she was cursed. But anyway, uh, she came back here, or she, she ended up writing a, a book called The um, Spirit Lake uh, Massacre, I think. I'll, I'll tell you in, in the end here. Um, but it's one of the last uh, so-called capture tales of, you know, I was captured by the Indians and survived. Um, I mean, I grew up hearing stories about uh, Mary Jemison uh, back in the Finger Lakes area of New York, right one of the Genesee. You may want to check her out. Maybe I'll get there one of these days when I get back uh, back to western New York. But um, so there's a lot of tales of that. She wrote that, um, used the proceeds of the book to come back and buy the old family home. And she lobbied to have the monument that I will show you at the end, uh, put here a monument to the, the people that were massacred 
Um, she used this as a tourist attraction until her death in 1921. Since then, uh, it's now owned by the state of Iowa and run as a historic place. Um, uh, I was hoping it was going to be open, but uh, because there is a, uh, looks like a, a museum and stuff, the sign says open. I'll try the door in a minute. I don't see lights on. Um, but uh, so anyway, that's what this is. You got to imagine this as open country. Uh, none of these trees were here. Uh, it was right near the lake. Oh, uh, one other tiny little tidbit is this lake, known as Spirit Lake, was a sacred lake to the Sioux. They didn't even fish in it. Um, and then when they come by and see a bunch of uh, settlers and cabins around it, yeah, that was like the match. It's probably uh, set this whole powder keg uh, going and exploding. So, um, that is the story of this cabin behind me. And I'm trying to find uh, the name of the, um, the book, uh, Spirit Lake Massacre. I think it might actually still be available. Um, I think I saw an ad online for it. But anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this little tale. Uh, I'm going to see if this building is actually open. And I don't know if we'd actually be able to go inside or just peek inside the windows. But if so, we'll do that next. And it's not open, but this is the inside of the cabin. And... There's a, uh, a bed and whatnot, but uh, I'm pretty sure these windows were added later. But it's, it's pretty cool construction where and not, you know, it wasn't just round logs, but they, they squared off the ends. And let's see, 10, 20, a little over 20 feet by, two, 20 by 25, more or less. In case you wonder, uh, every two steps I take is 5.2 feet. Uh, handy thing to know, I don't need a tape measure. To measure things but uh like i said just to look at the construction of this and the fact that this was built and uh it's interesting is it where it's cut out here i wonder why um wish there was somebody around to ask but anyway um this has been here what um 170 some 70 years or so and the fact that it's it's all original um, and still in uh, relatively good condition although who knows I think the uh, wooden gutters might have been added sometime later on Well, unfortunately, uh, even though the sign says open, there's nobody in there in the museum with the exhibits, uh, the or the cabin, and uh, so we can't get in there. I don't know. Probably uh, the coronavirus has, has put a the kibosh on people actually visiting here. But right uh, on the site here is this monument to everybody. And we'll go over to the uh, the family uh, graveyard. It's right over, right across the street. 
So across the street from the cabin is this little uh, family graveyard. And this monument is uh, over the remains of the people that were killed uh, on March 8th. 1857. The um, Roland Gardner, Francis Gardner, Mary Luce, Albert Luce, Amanda Luce, and Roland Gardner Jr. And this is the uh, the family cemetery where uh, Abby's son and her husband and where she's buried. Uh, she passed away in 1921. This is uh, quite the monument to those people that were uh, killed between March 8th and March 10th in 1857. Well, I think that's going to end my visit here to the uh, Abbey Gardner cabin and a site of the Spirit Lake Massacre. And I'm going to get on the road and see what other cool things I can find. Hopefully the, the next place I got planned is open. If not, we'll find something. All right. See you later, YouTube. Women, we will do what 